Hi everyone, I'm Vicki. And I'm Linda. And we are Partners in Crime. We're going to take care of a little housekeeping. Please subscribe to this channel and click on the bell notification. And you'll get notified every time we upload a video. Um, we really appreciate all your support. And we thought today that we would follow up on a video that Linda did highlighting happier times for Tylee and her mother. Um, they seem to have had a very loving relationship. Um, we don't know if that was an act or it just seemed so heart-wrenching to see that because Tylee seemed to think the world of her mother. Mm -hmm. So, based on her her posts and things her posts, like that, yeah, she said she had yeah. the best mother in the world. Mm -hmm. That um, you know, she's a lot the best of, one for the job. Yeah, a lot of cute teenage things that mm -hmm. she was saying. Yeah, like, you know. Although don't. my kids never said that, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> so maybe that's a good maybe. Thing. Look, look, ah. look where it lands. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. You're, you you oh don't know if maybe it was just a front because she wasn't really having the best. Right, right. But um, it, it was just just heartbreaking because they did seem happy. Yeah, yeah. And with that, we wanted to follow up on a couple other relationships that were in Lori and Tylee's life. Mm-hmm. And... One of those people is April Raymond. April Raymond was a friend of Lori's yes. when they when Lori lived in Hawaii. Uh, she had lived there with Charles Vallow. Mm -hmm. And um, she has a lot of insight into Lori's character at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, she also talked about how Lori changed over time. Definitely. She was not the same person. And um, they did a lot of things together. They were very close at that time. They went to the same church. Um, I guess was LDS. Yeah. Yeah. Then as well. April is LDS too. So she just said, and I don't know what, what point she saw the change in Lori, but... Lori started saying some dark things. She started talking about this philosophy that she has, um, this belief system that she has. No, we would say she got from Chad, but, you know, she could have developed this on her, her own. Well, you know. she had been talking to Chad then. Okay. When right. she was in Hawaii. I don't know the timeline. That's the only thing. And I apologize, viewers, but um, it's a little vague as to when she actually, I believe when they moved back to um, Arizona is when she started to have these um, crazy ideas or really start getting involved in Chad's group. Because when you see the videos of Charles, um, I believe they're in Arizona. Right. Because that's where he was killed. Right. Mm -hmm. But they did live in Hawaii. They did, together. yes. And he moved them back. Correct. So, I don't know when that relationship started with Chad. I know she was really into his books. Mm -hmm. And then she started going to seminars or whatever they called them at mm -hmm. the time um, all around his doomsday predictions right another thing i wanted to bring up we don't know when she started becoming friends with melanie gibb because that is who she started the podcast with um so i'm not sure where melanie gibb fits in as far as in hawaii or arizona i think it was arizona that they became friends but again it's very vague as far as these timelines and when they actually became friends or you know what I mean so <coughs> excuse me well like I told Linda I feel like I have a, a lot of tabs open in my brain mm -hmm. and I'm trying to fit them all together and know 
when is who and where. Yeah. And um, but we have the outline. Mm -hmm. We have the whole summary of this relationship, and it, it really is about Chad and Lori. They're the center mm -hmm. of this whole um, craziness. Case. Yeah. So when Lori moved back to Arizona, mm -hmm. at this point, she really, really was connected to Chad. Yes, I believe that they had met after that. And, and because that's when she started really getting more distant from Charles mm -hmm. and started having these crazy ideas about Zombies, was and darkness, and lightness, and yeah, just crazy stuff. Yep. So we both did watch the um, Nancy Grace. Uh, she had three episodes, I believe, maybe four, um, on this whole um, story. So I will bring up some things that we saw on these. Uh, Vicki, I actually was listening more than I was watching, but Vicki was, did watch the videos. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to bring up points and the people that they talked to, um, and then we'll elaborate on what people have said mm -hmm. during the Nancy Grace okay. um, show or mm -hmm. episodes. So... Um, as far as Julie Rowe, Julie Rowe is Chad's friend, and you know a lot more about Julie Rowe than I do. So. Julie Rowe uh, was Chad's friend because he was her publisher. Okay. He published five of her books. She actually wrote ten. Um, he, wrote, he published five of them, and they had a falling out over financial stuff, royalties. Okay. So after that... Um, they didn't really have a friendship, but she remained friends with Tammy, uh, Chad's ex-wife, or deceased wife, wife, yeah, and um, his children. So she claims to have a, a kinship with Chad because they both have um, abilities where... He can predict things. He can see things. He sees beyond the veil. She does as well. And she claims that she has angels that talk to her. And she hears God giving her direction. And she also had some uh, near-death experiences. And that's where all of this came from. And the same with Chad. Yes, he did. So, just some really... Far out stuff as far as Julie is concerned. But okay. she does know Chad and she talked about him pretty well. Mm -hmm. She said that he um, had a, a, well, he tried to have a relationship with another woman before Lori. And he was texting this woman and the, I don't know, she didn't give a name, but the woman's husband found out. And he threatened Chad and mm -hmm. said, you know, he was he was going to tell the world what Chad was doing. So this isn't the first time. And being LDS, you do not get divorced. Right. Or cheat or on your wife. Or cheat spouse. on your wife. Yeah. And apparently Chad was a player mm -hmm. because he uses this line uh, where we've been married in, in, in another life. <laughs> He, he, in another planet, in another life, in different worlds, and he used that on uh, this other woman. He used it on Julie Rowe. He used it on Melanie Gibb. Oh, my goodness. So he said this to both of them as well. As, to both, all and of the, them. And the woman, yeah. To all of them. And, of course, we know he's he said it to Lori, and Lori was just enamored with this whole Right, because situation. she was, you know... A translated being. Yes. She's a god because he told her she yeah. was. Yeah. So, I don't know what these women see in him mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and how he manages to, right. you know, get them all so attracted to him. I, I just don't understand it. They say he's charismatic. So, you know, we really haven't seen him but to 
say no to the camera when they ask about the kids and so we really haven't seen much as far as how he um, talks to people and, and Macarena or whatever you want to call it. Well, I was thinking, you know, a lot of you probably have relatives or friends who are questioning why would they go to a preparedness conference? There's absolutely no reason to go. <laughs> um, anyway, I was thinking that you probably will want to have a message prepared for when you get back to your ward tomorrow or something when they say, well, what did you hear? <laughs> what did they tell you? And so I'm going to give a statement that you can share with them. Okay. And so what I see is from Brigham City to Santa Quinn, it's like a special plate of land that will never be destroyed. Nothing will ever bad, nothing bad will ever happen in that stretch of land. And that the people will prosper until the second coming without any trouble. experiences and I'll talk about that and it seems like I've been waiting for 20 years for something to happen. I write all these novels and people are like, when's it going to start? You know? and, but doesn't it really feel like in the last two to three weeks that the eclipse is likely a sign, a sign of warning of what's coming. Uh, this is the Houston temple. I, I've looked at other photos and that, you know, that's, that's probably 20 feet deep from the front fountain and just how that temple was filled with water. Um, North Korea, they're going a little nuts right now. They, uh, Kim Jong-un seems to be intent on causing havoc in the world. Uh, no, uh, no question about it with him. Uh, even as we speak, Hurricane Irma is on its way to Florida. The earthquake in Mexico, I didn't get on here because it just happened, but the fires in California and Montana, it just feels like uh, times are starting to begin. Um, here's one of my favorite characters because this is how people think I act. Uh, there's Woody Harrelson in the movie 2012. And that's how my relatives honestly think that's how I've acted the last five years. <laughs> but he was right. <laughs> no. and, um, Apparently, he, he was supposed to come off as a very shy, um, introverted kind of guy. Mm -hmm. um, that's his game. <laughs> that, that is his game. Yes. You know, it's just unbelievable how he... You know, and I, and, and I think that's cult leaders. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, you see that in a lot. And, yes, yeah, sex is a big part of the cult, um, the cult dynamic as well. So um, we have some highlights from when she did, from when um, Nancy Grace did talk to Julie. Um, obviously, Tam, uh, Chad said Tammy would die three years before, well, three years before she died, he had visions that she would die in a car accident. Obviously, mm -hmm. she didn't. Mm -hmm. um, he also said, well, Julie said she would visit Chad and Tammy on a, um, you know, every month or two because she didn't live in the area, so when she'd come in, she tried to visit with them. Um, she did ask to stop by the one time that she was in town around when all this was going on. Um, well, when he was involved with Lori, and then Chad said it's not a good idea since Tammy um, was irritable and was off of her, her antidepressants uh -huh. and was dealing with some what kind of issues, Vicky? Jealousy issues. I wonder why. So it makes us think that Tammy knew. Yeah. Tammy knew what was going on with uh, Chad. maybe not with Lori. Maybe it was the other woman. But you know, when you're in situations. It's not hard for a woman I, to pick this stuff up. I, I think he knew. She knew about Lori. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if they ever met. I don't know that. I, I don't but know. But they were together mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, and they used to go to BYU and walk around the track That's and right. act like they were together. Melanie Gibb told us that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Tammy wasn't around, so uh, it was easy for them to do it. Right, right. So. So, um. Mm-hmm. So Julie had a lot of insightful information yeah. about him, and um, and then you just have to take 
what she says with a grain of salt as well because she is... Well, she claims she has this ability, the same that Chad has, mm -hmm. with being able to talk to departed people mm -hmm. and see, get premonitions about the future, mm -hmm. uh, about uh, things that were happening. She also said that she does not believe that the end of the earth, the end of the world is going to happen. She didn't buy into she that. She didn't buy into that. No. No. But she claims to be an empath, and an empath is somebody who can, Oh yeah, Vicky, what's an empath? <laughs> it's somebody who can pick up on energy and other people's feelings. Okay. Julie is a energy worker, mm -hmm. where she'll work with people, and she travels around, has clients. Um, to help them with grief and stress and any kind of traumatic experience. I don't know what an energy worker does, mm. but no, I don't know either. That's she's, she claims she can read this energy. Okay. Um, she was saying that she really was deceived by Chad because he was using his abilities for deceitful things. Right. So, where she is in the light, she does it for love and for doing good. Okay. Now that's the difference, apparently. So, then we had a Taylor Larson, who is Charles Fallow's lawyer when Charles was alive. Um, he also said that Charles was very fearful for his life. Um, and he did tell him if anything happens to him, it is Lori and Alex that would have done something. And they um, did. <laughs> they did. And then he was also scared for the kids. Um, Lori told him that there was an angel at home that would dispose of his body. So when you hear that, who wouldn't be, like, freaked out about it, you right. know? And the angel, we're assuming, was Alex. Mm -hmm. She um, told him on more than one occasion that he was a dark spirit, and beyond a dark spirit, he was a zombie, mm -hmm. and that he needed to, he needed to die because of that. Yeah. So, that was her, um, what's the word, when you have a reason to do something to somebody. Mm -hmm. M.O., I don't know. No, well, that yeah. wasn't her M.O., that's the way you do it, but you know what I mean, I know yeah. what you're talking about. I mean, that's what they'll bring up in court. Mm -hmm. Why did she want to do this? Right. Could be for money. That's probably part of it, too. Mm -hmm. was, yeah, we already talked about that. We talked about the million-dollar life insurance policy mm -hmm. that went to his sister. Right. Lori but that she thought it was going to her. Yeah, but she had all that other money from the kids. Um, and then Charles denied he was cheating. Like, he, be it, be it, I can't even be say it. that word. Yes, be denied <laughs> um, that he was cheating. Um, he did say he would take a lie detector test just to prove it to Lori. Um, so that leads you to believe that I think she really probably, did. yeah. And they didn't find a mistress. I mean, with all of this going on, you know how people are going to look for this. And mm -hmm. no one has come forth or has said anything about Charles seeing someone else. Right, so, they would have dug it up. <laughs> for they sure. They would have been found. So. Yeah. Um, and then he also said that Lori didn't want the kids. They were a burden to her, and she told Charles, you know, you could just have them. I don't want them anymore. Um, they stood in the way of her mission. Yes. It, she had a more important mission to carry out, mm -hmm. um, and they were... A burden and then another why don't, why don't you just give them the kids right you give don't them to them. people that want them and then Charles did have suspicions that Lori was cheating on him so that's the pot calling the kettle black as mm -hmm. far as Lori's concerned mm -hmm. deflect it over to your husband when you're the one that's actually doing it so right. we see that all the time right um, so and then there was a rich Robertson he was an R3 He's in R3 Investigations, that's the name of his company. He's a private investigator. He was hired by the Woodcocks and Brandon Boudreau. Um, Brandon said that he thought the Jeep that was used to, sh that we're saying Alex used to shoot at him was actually Tylee's Jeep. They gave it to Tylee. 
but it was Charles Valens. Okay. Yeah. It was so, name, yeah, that's really. what Brandon said, that mm -hmm. it was hers. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Rich did talk to Melanie Gibb, and he was, he thought that she wasn't very um, truthful when he asked about Melanie Pulowski, because that's who he was asking about, and her involvement with Lori at that point. She just kind of acted like she hadn't seen them for a while, so he did get the feeling that she was lying about Well, that. you know, she was involved with them mm -hmm. uh, in, in this whole belief system. And, you know, the she didn't do that. She stopped believing when they asked her to lie. Right. But the other thing is, she didn't come forward right away. Yeah, that's true. And... She was in hiding. Mm -hmm. Why? Who was she in hiding from? I mean, there's there's a lot more going on. More people are involved. Or if you know people are getting killed and you know who's killing them, I would be scared too. So that might be why she was hiding. She acts like she didn't know anything about it, but, you know, who knows? I mean, we're just speculating, obviously, but it makes sense. Yeah, you it know? could be that when she confronted them mm -hmm. about what they were doing and she told them, you know, how evil they were being. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe that's not the exact words, but, right, but close. you know, it was how they, they were going against mm -hmm. um, everything that they really believe in as far as the basis of LDS. Mm -hmm. Not that LDS believes in all of this crazy splintered off activity that uh, Lori and Chad were doing, but I think they just went too far off the mark for uh, mm -hmm. Melanie. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. And, um, yeah, the private investigator I thought was pretty good. He was. He was very thorough, and he also is following up on Melanie Pulaski. Mm -hmm. And he, yeah. you know, is pretty convinced that Melanie was involved in, um... At least to... Alex's shooting, if yeah. nothing else, yeah. Yeah, well, then she had to be involved in other things with right. him, too. Right, right. And I, it'll be interesting if they all go to court and they all testify. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I hope that that does happen, that they're all called. Yep. And I know that there's a we witness list. We just have list. to wait till August, yeah. But that, I don't know. That's not like the trial trial. Oh, that's just the preliminary, preliminary here. At that point, do they uh, put out, it, it, anybody watching, if you want to let us know, do they put out the um, list of the uh, witnesses? The witnesses, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they do that at that point. Um, I don't know, but... It's going to be one heck of a trial when they do have it. Yeah. And I hope they have it soon. <laughs> I mean, come on. Murder charges already. What yeah. Are we, what are we waiting for? Everybody's Let's just do waiting. It. Yeah. Um, Rich also put a tracker on, um, Was it on me? Alex's. Okay. Car, yeah, and he did follow Alex and Melanie. He didn't really specify when exactly, but he did follow them to a restaurant, um, and it was a pretty dark restaurant. He said, and Melanie had on sunglasses in a dark restaurant, um, and they he sat at a table near them, and he said they were talking in hushed voices, um, but it was kind of an in-depth conversation, you know, kind of. Um, they were talking about something important. Um, he couldn't really hear what they were talking about, but they kind of hurried up and ate their... Don't you wish you could know? Their dinner, yeah. So that's why he sat there to try to listen. Um, oh, do you remember when I said when Melanie and Ian were being interviewed by mm -hmm. Nate? Newton? Yeah, yeah. And at one point, they, they silenced... So we couldn't hear mm -hmm. what the lawyer was saying to her. Yep. And it was because Nate had asked. Well, it wasn't a cult, but were there some kind of a separate group mm -hmm. that was, they were involved with and that the lawyer cut it right off. Wow. 
and would let them elaborate on right. it more. Somebody also said, I don't know if it was Nate, I was watching something else, and somebody said it was definitely edited because something about the curtain, it was a certain way and then it wasn't in the same shot. So oh. they were probably stopping and starting and editing with the lawyers there and um, they probably asked more than we saw and they just weren't allowed to answer. So mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. he also said, this uh, Rich Robertson also said that he believes that Ian and Zulema were also involved in this group. Um, so it kind of had to be. There you go. So Ian they, is Mr. Innocent. Well, I don't think he's that innocent. I don't know. He was probably involved in them. Well, or involved in it. Ian and Melanie got married around the same time as Alima. Correct. And Alex did. I think they went to the same. Yeah, it was like a day apart or something like and, that. And um, it's just interesting how they all married so quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh. Ian yeah. wasn't that far off from a divorce from his wife when right. he married Melanie. So how did he find her? How did they find each other? Obviously, it was probably something. Well, and the same thing with Alex and Selima. They mm -hmm. rushed into a wedding. In fact, her son didn't even know that Just they were married. married. So why? Right. Why all of a sudden did they have to have these couple connections? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that that has something to do with right. whatever their plan is. And then Rich also said, because he was working with the Woodcocks, they asked him, you know, well, what about the kids? And he said he actually never saw the kids. He's been following these people around, but didn't see the kids. And that's what prompted the um, K to call to do the welfare check. So that's where it all started. He was welfare. following them around and he didn't see the kids at all. Melanie's with Alex, you know, her saying she didn't see the kids, but she just thought they were somewhere, you know, that to me really bothers me because she knew darn well where those kids were um, and that they were not okay. Well, Nate said to her, Nate Eaton, didn't you ever ask her? Mm-hmm. And yeah. she hemmed and hawed about, well... You know, and, and Lori has a plan, and she didn't want me to know because she didn't want me to be involved in, you know. Yeah. It was all smoke and mirrors, really. For sure. And then Lori obviously continued to use Charles's Amazon account after he died. So, she, you know. She bought the wedding rings. Yeah. And the, their, her dress. And yeah. I think she just kept using it, so she's probably spent a lot of money. Well, even before Tammy died. Mm -hmm. She bought the rings yes. and the dress and the outfit that Chad wore on the beach. Mm -hmm. um, yep, with Charles's Amazon account. That just, yeah. Oy, oy, oy. Yeah. So they had one more guest that I saw, and that was Rick Ross. Or I heard um, he was a cult edu. He works for the Cult Education Institute. So he was very interesting to listen to. Um, the, he, they, I think Nancy asked him, well, what happens when we're here on July 22nd and we're still here? You know what I mean? Um, how does Chad make up for that? Um, and with cult leaders, what they do is they'll say, this is going to happen on this date. And then if it doesn't happen, they say, oh, well, from everyone praying, God decided to move Right. the end of the world till later or um he got a message yeah that god gave him a new revelation or something like that so right. you know they have an excuse or they have reasons for everything so um right it's right. just Lori is now just too involved um she has too much he called a too much emotional equity in it now she sacrificed so much that it would be so hard for her to not believe this anymore. So um, well, it does work on people's brains. Yeah, and, because when people leave cults, some of them leave against their own will. They're taken out of that situation. Mm -hmm. And then they're kind of deprogrammed. Mm -hmm. They have to go through intensive therapy to get out of this 
fog that they're in. Yeah. And um, that might be the case for Lori because if she ever wakes up, my God, is she going to realize she's, it. She, yeah. And she will if there's a trial. Mm -hmm. And, you know. And it's after July 22nd. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm just. And, and we all know that the um, charges for um, Lori. Mm-hmm about abandoning her children mm -hmm. were dropped. They dropped, yes. They were dropped because the police found the bodies of the kids. So she didn't abandon them. They were dead. Mm -hmm. And um, they dropped those charges. And I, I'm a little concerned that they did that. Because Scott Reich said the charges for concealment of evidence will get less time in, in jail or prison at that point mm -hmm. than the charges for abandoning her children. So he was trying to weigh, why would they do that? Why mm -hmm. would they drop it? And he, he's thinking, well, they must have other plans okay. to take that chance. Right. Because they could have left those charges. With them. I'm sure they could have spun it some way. Mm -hmm. But they just dropped them. So, but they did leave the conspiracy charges there, and that's what he was saying. It mm -hmm. would be less time in prison just for that. Right. So, maybe they know more than we do. I mean, they usually do. Um, investigators usually do know more than we do, and, mm -hmm. you know, the prosecutor would definitely have that information as well. So, mm -hmm. we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I know. I'm just, I just can't stand it anymore. I really, you know, I was just saying... If someone goes out and shoots somebody in the street, and they're wounded, and they have to go to the hospital, it's considered an assault. Mm -hmm. Or maybe attempted murder. But then, when that person dies, it's up. The charges is automatically up to a murder charge. Mm -hmm. like murder one, murder two, um, involuntary manslaughter, whatever. But it's, it's up. Right. They haven't done that. With right. Lori and I don't get it. Well, they have to figure out what happened, I guess. Well, we know those kids didn't put themselves in the ground. They did not. So they have to find out who did um, I think and I, how they did it I, they, and why. They, I don't think, blaming it all on Alex makes sense for them, but... But they would still be culpable. Correct. For the for being in conspiracy murder for hire, that would be another thing that they could be right. Um, right. If I, I mean, you know, for. if I was driving uh, a getaway car mm -hmm. and I drove the car to the bank, and Linda went in to rob the bank, and I'm mm -hmm. sitting in the car, and all of a sudden I hear gunshots, and somebody dies in there. Guess what? Not only is Linda in trouble, but so am I as the driver of the car. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. Well, anything else that you want to share today, Vicki? <laughs> frustration? Yeah. Also another piece this week, so Court TV today, July 9th, officially noted that police now consider Lori a, quote, investigative lead in the death of Charles Vallow, which... They've been doing that unofficially for a very long time now and going and investigating that. But apparently now today, the, the police have officially called her an investigative lead. It, speaking of suspicious deaths, does everyone remember initially when this case first started happening that a lot of people focused on the divorce attorney, on Lori's divorce attorney's death and how he died randomly when she owed him money? Annie Cushing is doing a really interesting series on Twitter. And one of the most recent things that she posted is some updated information. So remember initially in this case, when it first started happening, people were talking about the divorce attorney that ended up dying. Yeah. That Lori owed a lot of money to. Uh, it's not a weird coincidence. Isn't it, though? So his name was Edwin Terry. 
Edwin Terry was a, the was the Austin, Texas divorce attorney, and apparently he died in 2006 of a heart attack. Now, does that sound familiar? Oh, no. And Lori owed him a considerable amount of money due to that nasty divorce and custody battle with Joseph Ryan. I wonder, a lot of dead bodies seem to turn up around Lori when there's money involved. I'm going to say there's no coincidences, but it's very suspicious to me. I want to know of Alex Cox's whereabouts in 2006. Um, I guess that's it. Um, if you don't have anything else, I, we're just going to no, say bye and thanks for watching. Bye. Take care.